Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome back to another video for Influence, the brand new space economic simulator MMO from Unstoppable Games. Now, frequent viewers of this channel will have already seen a little bit of information about Influence, where I've talked about the lore of the game, getting started with the crew, and a little bit about some of the more controversial elements of the game. But today, I actually wanted to jump in and show you some of it in action and talk about how to get started. Now, normally, when I make content for a game, I get stuck in behind the scenes with all the cameras and that switched off, figure out what's going on, and then wrap it up in a bow and present it to you as a sort of tutorial or here's how I'm having fun, here's how you can too style video. With Influence though, I thought it'd be a bit more fun since the game is coming up to its global release, it's still in pre-release at the moment, to essentially just jump in and mess around with it with the cameras and microphone rolling to kind of show you what it's all about, right? So without further ado, let's jump right in and showcase that. So I've created a couple of crews here on Adelia Prime. I'm going to jump right in now and I'm actually going to hire a new crew just to get things started and showcase some of what is going on. So zooming in to the planet here, you can see all of these different hexes here are different buildings. Each of these is a one kilometer square area. Now, if I go into the settings on the right hand side here, the uh, where are we? I think it's the top one, if I remember rightly, or is it the cog lot search? That's the one lot search. We then go into buildings and we click this little paint bucket here. This would normally look like this or one color, which doesn't make much sense. If we click this, we get a full color-coded breakdown of what everything is. And these yellow ones are essentially habitations. So from one of these selected, which could be like Wallenbergia, or we've got Lucidia's Landing here, Lucinda's Landing, sorry, we can then go into Recruit Crewmate and start a new crew. Now, in order to showcase what's going on here, I'm going to start with an engineer. See, so we get we got a woman, so let's think of a nice female name here. There we are, 5% 5, 5 increased building construction speed. I was right, builder is the one I'm looking for. So we're going to name our crewmate. I need to think of something off the top of my head. You'd think that I would have planned this ahead of time. That will do nicely. R appearance I'm happy with. We're going to recruit Sarai here into our crew. Now it's going to pop up with my little wallet here on the side. I've already attached my Argent wallet. Be aware that this will be something that is actually integrated properly into the game at a future date. So for the time being, every time I do any form of transaction or whatever, it is going to essentially pop that up um, but when the game hits global launch in fact possibly even during the pre-release that may not actually happen we should see that that does all get integrated fairly swiftly so we are now recruiting when a action is ongoing we can just close things down and leave it as it is you'll see that it is cycling here on the left hand side we then get this notification that that crew member has been minted, created. These are NFTs, and if you've been following my content, you'll know that shouldn't be a scary term. It just means it is a unique item that has its own, all of this information attached to it that makes it completely unique and thus can't be traded. Non-fungible is just the opposite of fungible. A fungible token is something like a dollar. My dollar is exchangeable for your dollar, and five of my dollars is exchangeable for a $5 note, for example that kind of thing. So with that crew member active, I'm now going to go into the burger menu at the top right here and into my crews. One of the really cool things about Influence is that you don't have to log out and log into new accounts every time you want to swap crews. You can just go in like this. So I'm going to swap to this crew member here. So we've now got Sarai and we're going to play as her for the time being. So it's going to log in basically as her. Now we are going to zoom out and we're going to start some construction here on Adelia Prime. Things are a little bit slow on my computer end at the moment. I'm not sure what's going on with my internet today. It is taking a bit of time to kind of get things up and running um, and log in. But give it a sec and we'll get there. There we are with that up and running. We now have our crew member sitting here in Lucinda's Landing. We're going to zoom out and you can see where other players have been building stuff. All of these are different constructions put down by other players. So I'm going to go all the way down here. I've been building some other bits and pieces down in this little area off to the side here. So I'm going to zoom in on that and we're going to start building a few new constructions. So let's start on this plot of land here. 
Now, just like in real life, unfortunately, you do need to rent the land that you are going to be building on. You can't just build anywhere. Adelia Prime, at least, is run by the Prime Council, and therefore you have to rent land from them. If you are minted enough, if you've got enough money, you can actually buy your own asteroids and then start leasing the land on those as well. That is a way for you to make money in influence. But for the time being, we're going to be leasing some land. So with this plot selected here, empty lot number 1,713,031. What a brilliant name. Love to hope I can rename that later on. I'm now going to look into actually constructing here. So with this highlighted, we go to the bottom left and plan a building site. No, we don't, because I need to control the site first. That means I need to go into, is it lot search? I can't remember which one of these it is. It might be the top one, lot info. There we are, and then lot permissions. We're gonna click available, and we are going to form an agreement. Now here you can see that this is going to cost a total of 7,300 sway a month. I want to have this running for at least six months, so I'm going to go on that and create an agreement. Total there of 42,800 sway. You can change some of these other settings, but for the time being, I'm quite happy with that. I need to authenticate the transaction. If that is another player, then I'm going to have essentially just paid them some sway. Now, sway uh, is standard weight Adalian yield, I believe. Obviously, Adalia is the system that we are in, Adalia Prime being this first asteroid that we're on. Um, so sway is essentially the main currency of the game, and it's what's traded between players, and it is what you also spend on actions. So if you are lucrative enough in your profiteering, you can actually essentially get the game completely for free because you're earning enough sway to then pay for your own actions to make more sway to pay for some actions to earn more sway. That's the idea of this, and that's kind of exciting. But there we are. This plot is now leased to me. Happy, happy days. So we've got that agreement all sorted there. Now with this selected, we can go back to plan building site and you'll see that I now have the capability of doing so. First things first, we're going to want a warehouse. Warehouses are probably your absolute basic construction site. Having a warehouse down on the ground is going to allow us to start stockpiling resources, which we can then use to build other things. Obviously, you can build other things first, but ultimately you're going to need at least one warehouse. So we're going to go for that one first. Selecting warehouse, hitting done, you can see we get our different resources here. Now, for some reason, Cement just doesn't want to load with me today. I've been speaking to the team uh, about this, and it's probably because I'm playing the game currently in Vivaldi. I couldn't get Chrome set up properly, properly but apparently Chrome or Firefox is going to work a lot better than this would do. What we can see if we go to create site here, again, I'm going to need to confirm what's going on. We are going to need 700 tons of cement. We're going to need 700 tons of whatever that other one was. I've completely forgotten. And then it's 400 tons of the last thing. Steel beams and steel sheets. That's what I'm looking at here. There are also some absolutely excellent tools that have been created by the community that are going to allow you to just off screen have that kind of information to hand so you don't have to keep tabbing back and forward. Community for this game has been absolutely monstrous, by the way. Genuinely some absolutely terrifying amount of commitment from other players going in and creating all kinds of tools to help with the game. If you are interested in influence, I strongly recommend joining their Discord. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video if I remember. And while we're talking about that, if you're enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and drop a like if you can. That, you know, it takes a couple of seconds to do. That would be awesome. Cool. So we now have the site active. We can come out of all this and we've got a warehouse site active here. Now, why does this have a site active? Essentially, this is to stop botting and griefing. Rather than players just kind of buying every site and then leaving it blank, essentially, when you purchase a site and start putting a plan down on it, you've got 48 hours to actually do something with that. If I don't come back in 48 hours, if I haven't tried to build something on here, that essentially opens it up to pirating by other players, which is a really cool mechanic. Great way that I'm really glad the team have thought of stuff like this. So we've now got an empty lot with a site plan down on it, I think. Let's, yeah, warehouse site. There we are. It's there, it's ready to go, so we need 700 tons of cement, 700 tons of steel beams, and 400 tons of steel sheets. Okay, now we could transfer materials to site, if you have those materials already, but unfortunately I, 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 I don't. 
I don't have those materials. And if we don't have those materials, well, we're going to need to get them from someone who does. This is where we're then going to come across to the market, asteroid markets here on the right hand side. And we are going to type in search by name for cement. Interestingly, it does actually load here. Now we're going to look at what's available nearby. Now it's important to take into account the distance because that is going to influence how, uh, influence how long it takes for that material to actually get to us, but also the price. So looking for example here, this particular market is only 6.9 kilometers away, but it costs 0.505 per unit. Whereas this one's 9.2 kilometers away at 0.0136. It's a lot cheaper here. In fact, this one here is 7.4 kilometers away. So it's even closer, but it's not as it's not quite as close as this one, but it is literally what how much does that work out? That's what 20 times cheaper, I think that works out to. No, probably more than that. Probably more than that. 50 times cheaper almost. Um, so we're gonna go into this marketplace here um, and view marketplace. Now, specifying quantities, I need 700 tonnes of cement. So 700, no, that's 700 kilograms. 700,000 kilograms. Now, for those of you using Imperial, I apologise in advance. Obviously, this is all done in metric. 700,000 kilograms is 700 tonnes. So we're going to go to that. We're going to go create the market order. And we're going to choose where to send this. Now, when we come to this list of where to send it, everywhere on this thing, we're looking for the one with the star on it. This is the one that we own. I have been told as well that this will be sortable later on um, and the stars will show us priority at the top of the list. But for now, you just scroll down till you spot the star. We hit done. And there we are. So it's going to cost us 9,800 sway to buy 700 tons of cement and have it shipped to that location there. So we're going to submit that order. Again, you're going to have to click in the wallet. And then with that authenticated, we come back. It's going to process that. You can see the purple bar here on the left hand side. If we close all this down, you'll see that that's currently working and processing through there. But of course, cement was just the first ingredient. We also need some steel beams and some steel sheets. So we're going to go back into the market. We're going to type in steel. Now, steel beams. How many of those did I need? I've completely forgotten how many steel beams it was. So for warehouse, I'm going to have a look through the tool again for that. Was it 700 beams or was it 700 of the sheets? I forget which way around that was. So we're going to load in on that. And for warehouse construction, it is 700 tons of steel beams. Cool. So again, we're going to have a look at who is local to us. Got quite a bit there. A little bit closer and slightly cheaper. This kind of marketeering is really cool and it's a big part of what is going to make influence influence, right? That yes, you could have a big central market that has everything nice and cheap, but it's so far away, it's going to take a long time to transfer all of those goods to you. So people are going to set up warehouses and markets further outside of the center to give you that capability to buy things a little bit closer to where you need them. That can cause all kinds of different fluctuations with pricing, right? So we're going to confirm that. Essentially, it means that using an EVE Online kind of example, Jita is great. It's fairly central, but it's a long way away from places like Amar. So you need different markets to open up and it might be more expensive to have certain goods at different markets, but that's kind of how you can make your money. You transfer stuff that way, you buy stuff cheap, you sell it more expensive. Marketeering, big part of the game. There we are, steel beams done. So we're going to go back. And the last bit was the other steel, which was steel sheets. And this we only need 400 tons of. So again, let's have a look here. Nice and close. Nice and close there with, yeah, decent price. Cool. View marketplace. And again, this one, I only need 400 tons of. Just check I've got that right. 400,000. Yep. And again, we are going to have that shipped to our new plot where our warehouse is going to be. So we submit the order. I have to make sure that I can authenticate that. And off it goes for authentication. Now you'll see that on the left hand side here, this one is going to just process that market transaction. Then we've got two surface transfers that are coming along their way to this location. 
Essentially, imagine that I've bought this on the market and they've popped it into the back of the Amazon delivery van and it's on its way to me now. And in one hour, 31 minutes, that will arrive. I'm going to need to be here, not necessarily in an hour and 31 minutes, to accept that delivery. Again, I have been told that at some point in the future, that may not be a thing and it will actually just automatically drop off at that point. You also need to be careful that at this point, you are only sending the materials that you actually need. If you need 700 tons, don't send 701 because you will have to throw away that additional ton because you've got nowhere to store it, right? You are essentially just buying the bits and pieces that you need to fulfill the build order, if that makes sense. So if it costs you 700, if it's going to take 700 tons, 700 tons and 400 tons, send exactly that. Because otherwise, anything in excess, you've got nowhere to store it, you're going to build what you need to build, and the rest of it you're going to literally have to dump away, losing you money. Not a great look. Don't do it. So at this point in time, I'm going to need to leave this for an hour and a half, and then I will be back and I will show you how we actually complete that construction. Does it need to be exactly in an hour and a half that I come back? No, but it does need to be within that 48 hour window that we've seen at the top left there. Otherwise, that site does come open to piracy, and I don't want to lose this site because I'm building some other constructs around it as well. Just to showcase that process again, I'm going to quickly do this now by going into another lot. We're going to open up a new lot with a new lease here. It's going to be a six month leasing period. The reason I'm doing this is that hopefully you can do what I did when I was being taught this as well. You can kind of watch me do it and say to yourself, right, OK, he's about to do this. He's about to click on this and this is why he's doing it. And it, hopefully that will help you understand what's going on here. Now, this time around, though, I'm going to build an extractor because extraction, obviously, of resources is going to be an important part of things. So there we are with a new site down. We're going to place building site. We're going to go for extractor. Again, 450 tons there of cement, 600 tons of steel, three tons of whichever that one is, and these other bits and pieces here. So we're going to create site confirm it and then we go back to the market right so cement cement 450 there we go nice close one again too expensive it's gonna be that one there 450 tons have that sent to my new site now we look for the star there we are, that has now added the extractor to the list. So we're gonna hit on that one. 450 tons of cement is gonna be on its way there. Confirm that action. What else did we need? So that was a the cement. We then needed the steel beams and that's 600,000 tons of steel beam. Again, you can just kind of watch along as I'm doing this. Closer and cheaper. Nice. Let's do that. And that was 600 tons. Easy way to remember that if you're not used to tons being a, a metric unit. Like, I don't mock people for this. I know some Brits do. And um, ultimately, we created that really weird system, right? Of like, you know, your pounds and ounces and all that. Um, easy way to remember it is 700 you know if you if it's if you're going from kilograms to tons just add three zeros on the end so 600 and then tons means three more zeros that's it so we're going to submit that order get the steel beams sent through after the steel beams was the new materials so one of these is these so-called polyacronyl yeah, polyacrylonitrile fabric. Wow. I did do chemistry once. I should be able to pronounce that better than I actually did. That's expensive. That's quite cheap. And it's close. So we're going to view the marketplace. And these... I need three tons. So three, and then the three zeros for the tons. Again... Sending it to our extractor. There it is. Submit that order. 
does also actually say tons down there, so you can double check. Okay. We then need six power modules, I think it was. Which are these things. Oh, that's very expensive. That's cheap, but very, very far. Oh, none of these are particularly cheap for the close ones. I think our cheapest is there. That's a little bit closer, and I don't mind paying a little bit more for that. Oh, none in stock there. Okay. Yeah, listed demand. We're going to have to actually have a look at these, aren't we? Yep, that one there. Okay, view marketplace. So I know that's the same one. Hang on. Let's go with this guy then. That's better. I actually got the price there. Otherwise, I'd be essentially setting a buy order and just kind of saying, hey, I'll buy this off you for this price if you want to sell me some for that price. Um, so power modules, I need six of them. Not tons. Six units. And have those sent out to our extractor. So those are on their way. Interestingly, they weigh a ton each, you can see. And then finally, there was one other thing on that list, which was the fluids automation modules. Again, these can actually be built by players as well, which is kind of important to note. Oh, not many of these around. Although there we are, nine kilometers, that's fine, that'll do. I only need one of these, fortunately, because they are really quite expensive. And we're going to have that sent to our extractor as well. There we are. Authenticate that transaction. And boom. So, that has now shown you how to start leasing lands how to put down a plot on that land, how to actually plan something that you're going to put on that land, and then how to both buy those resources from the market and have them transferred to the actual lot that you're going to be building on. Now, that's going to be it for today's video because it's going to take a bit of time for that to come through. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll show you then how we actually construct this once those materials arrive. Happy sailing, folks! and see you all in Adelia.